going to introduce and give the, the floor to Alexandra Hosley, Senior Consultant at Factual. Here we go. So yeah, short introduction. I'm Alexandra Hosley. I'm Senior Consultant at Factual, and I'm also the product owner of Rideal. So, and I'm really happy to use these five minutes to introduce to you the concept of micro incentives and how our solution Rideal actually can help increase ridership of micro mobility service providers. So if you look at the past couple of months, um, there is a rising trend in using incentives or behavioral economics to promote the necessary model shift away from the usage of private vehicles to more sustainable and efficient modes of transport. And if you look closer in Europe over the past decade, um, various European cities are actively investing and promoting and taking action in creating this modal shift. Um, some of them more successful, some of them even making the modal shift worse over the last year, which is something we don't want to see. So let's look at the successful examples. And the leading example here is the city of Antwerp, which you see on the very left side of the graph. So the city of Antwerp, they were actually able to continuously reduce the, their modal share of private vehicles over the past 10 years. So, and one reason for the success is act actively is, act is active, the active implementation of incentive programs to promote the use of sustainable modes of transport um, in their city. Right now, they're currently um, confronted with the challenge that they have so many different uh, incentive programs running um, that it's get becoming hard to actually manage and control them uh, due to the very high administrative effort. So through talks uh, with different stakeholders in European cities, we have actually identified the following challenge regarding incentive programs. So we all know incentivizing modes of transport is nothing new. We have been doing this with subsidies for the public transport, or we do it in any different way. But so far, all these incentive programs are usually based on a manual one-to-one -one contract between either public authority or a corporate with a transport service provider. And this might be very useful for this specific use case, but it comes with the downside that they're usually very rigid. You can't really change the contract easily. Um, it comes with a decent amount of administrative effort. Um, it only allows a limited solution to the specific use case. And it does not necessarily address a more complex need of the public authority or the corporate. So all this together makes it uh, very limited for scalability to run many incentive programs. So how can we make incentive pro programs more scalable in order to create more positive impact on our mobility ecosystem? And this is exactly where we placed our solution Rideal at. So Rideal is actually a backend platform which we have developed, which enables public and private organizations to manage, monitor, and control all their micro incentive programs on a per trip basis in parallel. So on the left-hand side, as you can see, we have either public authorities or corporates who can either individually or jointly set up mobility incentive programs. On the other side, they will get then easy access to any transport service provider or mobility as a service provider platform operating in a preferred area without having to enter manual contracts for each of the specific parties. So how does exactly uh, Rideal work in specifics? So incentivizers or subsidizers on the left-hand side, public or private, have access to the Rideal backend platform, where they are able to uh, set up and modify real-time all their incentive programs by first defining the budget, the rules, and the criteria, including geographic information, time, and other metadata criteria, such as, for example, the age or the membership of their target group. This allows them then to granularly apply micro incentives to any person, any circumstance and mode of transport in the specific geographical area of their interest in order to achieve social, environmental or financial goals. So on the other side of Rideal, Rideal has an API which is easily integrated to any mobility as a service or transport service provider platform who will then provide these micro incentives or micro subsidies directly to the specified target group. So Rideal does not directly interact with the end user, allowing the target groups to receive incentives through their pre preferred transport service um, provider app they are already using. And another core functionality is actually the data analytics part. 
that um, Radil creates real-time reports and data analytics for the public authorities and the employers or corporates in order to create transparency, to make it more manageable. And they learn about their programs, what works, what doesn't work, where, what, is, uh, what is impactful. And through that, they can continuously improve their, their, their programs. So how can micromobility actually benefit from uh, these incentive programs run by Ideal? And we should look at two specific examples in order to make it more, more, more graspable. So first of all, transit and time desert. So, Micro incentives allow actually micro mobility service providers to roll out their products and service in areas which are usually um, underserved by either public transport or general mobility services due to a lack of demand and financial viability. So thanks to this, micro mobility services could fill the gaps to pump to actually bring people to public transport service uh, pub public transport hubs without having to carry the whole financial burden as it can be micro-subsidized or co-funded by either municipalities or corporates in this given area who has an interest in it. Another example is, for example, the, the flatten the demand curve of, of public transport example. So through micro-incentives, the use of e-bikes, e-scooters or, or kick scooters can be promoted um, and made more attractive, especially during peak hours, in order to relieve and balance out the pressure and demand on public transport facilities. So thanks to IDEAL, all different transport service provider can profit equally from such programs if, if a municipality, for example, is launching this without having to enter negotiations directly with each city or each public transport agency. So in summary, um, through the facilitation of micro-incentive programs, I mean, I just mentioned two examples, but there are like infinite number of combinations of programs we can actually run. The collaboration combination of different mobility service providers becomes easier, more manageable, and therefore also more scalable. And this will eventually lead to more integrated and attractive mobility offerings to successfully tackle gaps and first of all, compete with the private vehicle. And through that, ultimately, new and more riders and business will be brought to the different micromobility service providers in the existing market. And all this while balancing and minimizing the financial outry, uh, outlay through the reduction of administrative costs on the subsidizers part but also through the flexible and target-oriented use of incentive and subsidy money, and through the possibility, actually, which is very valuable, of co-funding these, um, these services in different areas. And this will all bring us a step closer to what we all want, a truly integrated and sustainable mobility ecosystem, as mentioned before by Joseph, in the level three and level four, which we tried to achieve, all leveraged by mobility data. So yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know. I hope I made it in the five minutes and I give back to you, Laya. <laughs>